Is solo game dev an excuse for unreadable code? Word around town is this pirate software guy is a seasoned game dev, but can we improve his code's readability without compromising performance? Exhibit A, some fragile and difficult to read code. Right off the bat, we have some low hanging fruit. We're initializing what's supposed to be an array with an integer value of zero. This isn't only confusing, but it could also have an impact on performance since there's going to need to be some type coercion under the hood. The standard way to initialize an empty array would be like this. Next, we're looping up to 1000 and explicitly initializing each element to zero. So 999 elements in the array that are all set to zero. I couldn't see how far the file goes in the VOD, but it looks like he's also redundantly explicitly setting each element in the array line by line below the loop. I assume this is for readability, so that leads me to conclude that we should actually remove the for loop that initializes the 999 elements altogether. I say that because I don't think that there are actually 999 storyline points in the game, but that's just a guess, so take it with a grain of salt. But anyways, I think we can actually save on space and reduce the amount of memory allocated for this array by just using the line by line initializations that he's already written out for now since, I mean, at least those have comments instead of just a bunch of magic numbers. And speaking of magic numbers, let's address the elephant in the room. Having comments here to address each storyline point is very fragile. And that's because it's really easy for the comment to go out of sync with the actual code. Like maybe one day he adds another storyline point, right? And like most of us would do, he just copies one line down and changes the index. But wait, he copied the comment too, but he didn't notice and just left it. In a case like that, we would have two indexes with the same comment, and which one is actually being described by the comment would be anybody's guess at that point. Now, I get it, we don't want to just juggle around this large array with long character sequences or strings, but that's actually what enums are for. And yes, I say enums, I can't help it, let's just move on. An enum allows us to use words as identifiers in our code, but under the hood, these identifiers actually correspond to constant integer values. So actually, we keep all of the benefits of using integers, but we also get two very useful bonuses of being able to write out descriptive identifiers as well as immutability. So what I would actually do here is I would create an enum and name it something like game state, And all of these comments, I would convert them into the identifiers in the data structure to be used in place of the indexes in the storyline array. Then to improve readability even further, I changed the name of storyline array to game state array. And for the actual values of each state, for example, light switch burn state, if they're binary states, like light switch state on off or yes no or burnt unburnt. I wouldn't even bother saying for example burnt unburnt. I'd just change the name from light switch burn state to light switch burnt. And I'd just use booleans for all of the binary states. So is the light switch burnt true or false? So we can get rid of all of the on off yes no burnt unburnt stuff. Then for the non-binary states, ones that could potentially have more than two options, I'd create a separate enum for those. For example, Lore's clothing would be its own enum and then we'd have pajamas or sweater. And of course, for this category, I assume that it'll be extended in the future, for example, underwear. So it's not necessarily a binary state. And finally, since we changed the name of the storyline array, we should be consistent and change the name of the function as well to game state vars. Anyways, that's how I would refactor this code. 
And I just want to mention that none of us write perfect code. So in my opinion, I think we should do our best to be empathetic and understand how it feels to have your code reviewed by others and to try and approach it with some professionalism and understanding.